वेलकम टू ए ब्रांड न्यू कोर्स ऑफ फोरकास्टिंग ब्रॉट टू यू बाई माई चैनल क्लासिक क्वान्स दिस कोर्स इज डिजाइन फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड इंडस्ट्री एक्सपर्ट्स दिस कोर्स इज कम्प्लीटली फ्री एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड यूजिंग यूट्यूब ऑनली दिस इज ऑल्सो ए कम्प्लीट कोर्स विच मीन्स आई एम नॉट सेलिंग एनी अदर सो कॉल्ड एडवांस्ड कोर्स इन एनी अदर प्लेटफॉर्म बाय रिडायरेक्टिंग द व्यूअर्स my promise is if the videos and explanations are followed thoroughly i believe that the viewers can get help immensely in their academic or professional endeavors in today's video we are just introducing the subject forecasting and just want to discuss certain points before starting of the actual lectures so i thought that initially it will be better to introduce the course using some formal definitions of forecasting then later on i changed my mind and just took some famous quotes from various media you can see them there are various perspectives of forecasting in the business world and considering all those perspectives you can get a close idea of what the forecasting subject is and how it should be used in reality in real life so first of all see that someone is saying that the there are two kinds of forecasters one is there who don't know and another is there who don't know that they don't know so our target must be we should fall in this category and not in this category there are certain pessimistic quotes as well see here uh, that uh, the quote says that the only function of economic forecasting is to make astrology look respectable so this is i mean too much pessimistic also see the sarcasm here in this particular quote he is saying that the old rule of forecasting was to make as many forecast as possible and publicize only those one that are right okay this is good thing and what is the new rule the new rule is to forecast so far in the future that no one will know you got it all wrong that means you forecast for the 100 year forecast so that uh, you and i will die and no one will verify okay but out of these all all these pessimisms there is optimism as well you can see the famous quote of peter drucker that the best way to predict your future is to create it that means you don't have to forecast you want something you just create it and enjoy and so but ultimately what i found with this particular quote is i think most appropriate for our purpose see it is saying that performers really perform miss projections are more often than norm till we skew them up high we miss but we try so this is the perfect statement or the most useful statement uh, in our context because uh, we are sure that in our forecast or any forecast will not predict the future in much accuracy like the forecast and the actual that will be much different that can be much different but that doesn't mean that we are going to leave forecasting on the whole we should always try to get a better forecast because our job is to get a educated guess using the methods of forecasting so in this way you can collect as many course quotes as possible and as many definitions as you want but ultimately it boils down to these four properties or characteristics of any forecast so forecasts are often wrong what do you mean by often wrong that means if you forecast and then if you monitor the reality in the future then obviously there will be differences it is not possible that your forecast and the actual reality in the future going to match so forecasts are often wrong and what is the second point second point is it is as good as the data quality that means if your data your historical data is not correct not good not proper inaccurate or incomplete then you cannot expect that the forecast is accurate so it is the preliminary condition that your data 
that you are using from the historical perspective should be accurate and complete and good data so that the forecast is also good the next one is any forecast you take it is always going to be more accurate in the short term so if you are taking any model of forecasting and trying to project for a long future like maybe 5 years from now or 10 years from now or even more than 2 years then the forecast will forecast will not be that much accurate but for a short term forecast like 3 months or 6 months or maybe shorter than that 1 month or 2 month those forecasts are more accurate than the long term forecast and finally forecasts are better if it is done aggregate what do you mean by aggregate that means uh, for example if you are doing the aggregate forecast of the economy for example gdp you are doing the forecast of gdp so that means you are including every type of income every type of goods every type of services all together and getting one value one particular dollar value so forecast for that figure will be always much accurate compared to individual forecast like uh, suppose uh, you want to forecast a particular industry or a particular goods or services then that forecast will be less accurate compared to the aggregate forecast so these four points has to be remembered then we must talk about the classification of forecasting system then classification should always be based on certain base for example the first base is your time horizon so based on time horizon you can have three types of forecast one is short term another is medium term and finally long term so what is a short term forecast based on industry and uh, value chain and other context also the time range or the time horizon may vary but in general as a rule of thumb you can say that anything less than 3 to 6 month is short term forecast and what is medium term medium term is greater than 3 to 6 months and less than 2 years that you can say that it is a medium term forecast and finally what is long term long term is greater than 2 years so as we have learned already in the last slide your short term forecast will be always much accurate compared to your medium or long term forecast the next base is the method so which method are you using for your forecasting technique so if you had good amount of data data means historical data and the data is also good data what is a good data what is bad data we will discuss in a while and thirdly if you think that your future is going to be like almost similar to your present is then if these three conditions are there then you can use the quantitative techniques that is the numerical techniques these techniques we will discuss in much details in the course but if suppose you don't have a good amount of data from history or even if you have that data it is not good data and if you think that your future is going to be entirely different from what it is now so then you should not or cannot use quantitative techniques you should always focus on qualitative methods of forecasting the third base of classification is the nature of output so for example you may be interested in just one point forecast like in future you want to get a single value a single point of gdp then it is a point estimate but if you want a range so for example you forecast that the gdp is between x1 and x2 within these two ranges 
these two values so if that kind of forecast is required then it is a interval forecast and finally the level as we have discussed already macro level is the totality like aggregate, aggregate forecast for example gdp or gnp and what is micro level micro level is just on single portion of it for example if you want to monitor automobile sales auto sales or even more micro is one company for example toyota toyota sales or even more micro is just one model one model sales so this type of forecasts are micro forecast as we have already discussed your macro forecasts are going to be accurate more accurate compared to the micro forecast now the methodology whatever be the classification applicable to you the methodology of forecasting is going to be almost same so in the first step we will formulate and collect the data what does that mean that means the you will determine the appropriate data what is required and then collect it either from a primary source that means you will yourself collect the data or you will collect it from a secondary source that is from some other sources where the data was already there okay so once the data is collected the next step is to remove or replace the bad elements of a data and clean the data so now what is the bad element the bad element of data is basically it will be unstructured either it will be unstructured or incomplete or inaccurate or duplicated if this type of attributes are there in your data that means your data is a bad data then maybe you need to collect a fresh data or remove these elements from the data and see if, if you are left with significant amount of good data that can be used for your forecasting model okay if data manipulation is done the next part is model building and evaluation in this case you are not going to build just one model rather you will test the data for multiple models and using the forecasting error estimates you will determine which model is the best fit for this particular data so this type of activities is the activity will be the third step where you will develop various kind of models and finalize just one or two from those sets based on the forecasting error and once these models are selected then you implement the model which is the calculate basically the calculation of the forecast for the future using these models so that is your fourth step and what is the final step final step is the evaluation of the forecast for example this there is a difference between between this evaluation and this evaluation this evaluation is between your own forecast of the past data and the past data actual past data and now what is this evaluation this means you have made the forecast for the future and then you are waiting for the actual data that are generated in the future and then you are calculating the error and then trying to see whether the forecast is accurate or not so that is the evaluation of forecast another thing is another method of evaluation is you have a historical data you just partition the data the initial part the first part of the data will be called the training data using that training data we will be you will be developing the models and so once the models the model is developed we will implement the model on the test data which is the next portion of your historical data and based on that test data result on the test data you will uh, finalize the model okay so this was all about our uh, introduction video now at the end i would like my viewers to read this particular article 
from the Harvard Business Review Press. That is the six rules for effective forecasting by Paul Sefo. And this uh, article is available in Harvard Business Review. Maybe you can read it free also. I will give the link in the description and briefly I have mentioned the rules, six rules here and it is not very difficult to understand just by looking at the definitions but if you want more details and then use the comment section to let me know then I will post a single video that based on this particular article only. So that's it about the introduction of forecasting in the next video we will explore the data patterns like various kind of data what are the different components of data that we will see but until then goodbye and thanks for watching this video